In Minnesota, there is a push to make it more difficult for smaller parties to qualify for elections. Former Governor Jesse Ventura, also a former pro wrestler, took the stand to speak out against the push, alleging that if something like this had been in place back in the 90s, he never would have been elected governor. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, I've done more testimony in this building in the last two weeks than I did in my entire four years as governor because you used to have to come and see me. But I'm here because this is very disturbing. I'm here in total opposition of this. And let me just state one fact. If these rules would have been in place back in 1998, the state of Minnesota would not have had a chance to elect Governor Jesse Ventura. Now, I'm sure that pleases both of the parties because I believe that's why this is being done. And I'm not gonna get into whether or not Jesse Ventura was a good governor during the term that he served because it doesn't really matter for this story. Those debates are usually so biased that they are never ending, inconclusive, and practically pointless, not to mention the fact that inadequate leaders are elected into office all the time. That's a different conversation that is probably worth having if and how we should be qualifying people for political runs, but I don't want this conversation to get sidetracked with that one. Now that said, Jesse Ventura's election as Minnesota's governor was headline grabbing back in the 90s. Well, now it's 1998 and the American dream lives on in Minnesota because we shot the world. He was already widely known for his wrestling in the WWF, and he had a somewhat notable acting career. He was in the 1987 Predator movie, uh, Ricochet, Demolition Man, he had a small role in Batman and Robin, and he played himself a few times, and more. He was an interesting character, as many pro wrestlers are, and Ventura's venture into politics fell right in line. So when he ran for office, he ran as an independent, as a member of the Reform Party, the party founded by Texas billionaire Ross Perot. So billionaires back in the 90s, they weren't like the billionaires of today. They weren't as obvious, not as prominent. Ross Perot used to get spoofed all the time on all that, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like a kid's version of SNL that was on Nickelodeon. Of course, SNL also used to spoof him quite a bit. Uh, Ross Perot ran for president twice, both times as an independent. He portrayed himself as a man of the people, which was as ironic back then as it is today. He was against NAFTA, and he liked to talk numbers, taxes, and economics because he was a businessman. If you haven't already come to your own conclusions, I'll say that many people believe that Perot's presidential bids foreshadowed Trump's campaigns two decades later. In fact, Trump did run briefly for president in 2000 as a member of Perot's reform party. So at one point, Perot was actually polling higher than the Republican and Democratic candidates, Bush and Clinton respectively, but ultimately he was unsuccessful at winning the presidency. The party collapsed right around 2000, but the fact that Perot ran as a staunch independent rather than siding with either party is a big part of what sets him apart from similarly fringe political candidates in our own recent history. He challenged the two-party system directly, calling attention to its limitations and inadequacies. Jesse Ventura's election as Minnesota governor in 1998 was the party's biggest win, even though Ventura technically left the party while he was still governor. Ventura presented himself as fiscally conservative and socially liberal, which is how a lot of Americans still define their politics today, whether they view themselves as classically liberal or centrist or libertarian or whatever. But regardless of how you define your own personal politics, you can still only vote for a candidate from one of two parties, which as we know all too well, often has Americans voting for the least terrible of two unsatisfactory candidates. I mean, you could vote for a third party candidate, or you could write in your preferred candidate, but we all know that in a two party system, that's more akin to throwing your vote away, potentially benefiting the party you disagree with more and hurting the party that you would rather see win. Conversely, if you succumb to electoral pressure and cast your vote for the lesser of two evils, you're not being true to yourself, but more practically, you're helping to further ingratiate the two party hold on American politics. We all know the story of how George Washington warned against forming political parties, and we all know the story of how, as soon as he was out of the picture, Jefferson and Hamilton wasted no time in doing exactly what they were advised not to do. 
The duopoly has been a part of our American system of government for almost as long as we've been a country, and we're seeing the absolute worst effects of it nearly two and a half centuries later. With the filibuster, the congressional supermajority, the electoral college, and more, Americans have whiplash. Every four to eight years, when a different party is in power, we see laws passed and then repealed. We see institutions strengthened and then dismantled. We feel unstable, unsure of what systems we can rely on, which ones will be around long enough for us to strategize our financial futures around whether or not we can plan for the well-being of our descendants. Ultimately, it's undemocratic. We hold ourselves up as the pinnacle of democracy around the world, and yet we have highly populated areas in our country that lack representation on the state and federal levels. Conversely, we have overrepresented minorities. We have districts that are completely ignored by either of the two parties during campaign seasons, and we have entire elections that hinge on handfuls of swing votes. Even when votes are cast and a party wins, even when one party wins a majority in any branch of government, the other party is empowered to block anything that ruling party tries to pass, essentially undercutting the demonstrated will of the people, thereby undercutting democracy itself. Unlike what's happening in Minnesota, we should be moving toward a system that makes it easier, not more difficult, for smaller parties to qualify for elections. We should be moving toward a system that allows voters to vote for the candidate that best represents their values and ideals, rather than a system that insists that voters cast their votes strategically, lest they one day, I don't know, accidentally empower a party that wants to take away their Medicare and Social Security. And Americans are great at making excuses for why doing anything different from the way we're currently doing things would be impossible, or why something less than perfect is an unsuitable replacement for something entirely problematic. But other democracies around the world are already doing democracy in a more representative and more effective way than we are. And I know it's crazy to say, but we might not be the shining beacon of democratic perfection that we fancy ourselves to be. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you.